Oxygen absorbers do an awesome job of extending the shelf life of your foods. When you're putting that food in jars, do you know what size you need to use? We're going to show you. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. I love jars. Any kind of glass jars. Mason jars are especially my favorite because when I can my foods, I do both wet pack and dry pack. This happens to be freeze dried shredded cheese. When I put them on my shelf, it's so much easier for me to rotate because I see what's in the jar. I can reuse the jar and quite frankly, I never reuse the lids with wet pack, but I reuse the lids with dry pack. But I think it's just beautiful to have them on the shelf and to go down there and see that I have the bottle of freeze dried shrimp and know that this can be good for many, many years on the shelf, but it's also super convenient when I want to have it for dinner and we like to rotate through our food. So I am a huge fan of glass jars for storing stuff. I, I recognize the, what are the two dangers for storing in my beautiful glass jars? Right, and that is light which does degrade your food, but in a dark environment, that issue goes away. The other one, of course, is breakage. And that just happens once in a while, but, but not very often. But one of the things that's really important for us to do is to use oxygen absorbers in them because what it will do is it prevents the food from oxidizing because it removes all of the oxygen from the environment. That way, it, the quality of the food lasts significantly longer. And so for us, that's a really valuable step. It's a little bit tricky understanding what size oxygen absorber you might need for these glass jars. So that's what this video is all about. We're gonna show you exactly how we do it and what size you should probably use when you are packaging your dry goods. Now, this is for dry goods, right? Freeze-dried goods, great candidate for it. Things like flour and wheat. Now, you would never use it in sugar or salt because right. it'll turn it hard. We don't want to package anything that is wet because that could create an environment for botulism. So you've got to be careful. It all needs to be dry goods. And I will leave a link to a site where you can look up the water content in a lot of different foods. So I'll leave that below. Now, let's get busy. Now let's talk about what size oxygen absorber you need for different size jars. What we want to be able to do is make sure that we're taking all the oxygen out of the whole thing. Now some, some products that we're gonna put in there are pretty tightly packed. Others are fairly loose, maybe like macaroni and things. But just for safety's sake, we wanna make sure we're pulling all the oxygen out of the entire jar. That way we know we have a little cushion. And this was a little interesting to me at first. I thought, well, I know there's more than 800 cc's in a gallon, but then I remembered we're just pulling out the oxygen. We've just got to pull out the oxygen, then it made sense. Which is 21% relatively, right? Right. About 21%. And that's one of the reasons why not all, when you do mylar, not all of them suck in really tight. For the gallon, 800 cc's. For a quart, we only need 200 cc's. For a pint, 100 cc. And for this little cute guy, only 50 cc's. So that's what you need. But you can always oversize an oxygen absorber. And I think that's really important to know. And that's what I do a lot. So I have a little spice store here where I keep tons of great stuff. But here's some of my freeze-dried garlic. And what I do is when I put the oxygen absorber in here, this is only a pint. So it's only required to have a hundred cc. But a lot of times I'm going to have like a four or 500 cc because that's the package I have open and I will use that. And so for the first several times when I open this jar and then reseal it, it will actually reseal itself. And so that's a really good thing for us. So oversizing it, what happens is there's iron in there. The moisture in the oxygen causes the iron to rust, which removes the oxygen from the air. And so once there's no more oxygen, that chemical process stops. But once you introduce oxygen again, it'll start until the oxygen absorber is exhausted. So that's why sometimes I think it's a good idea to over size it, especially if it's something like the freeze dried foods where you're going to be opening and closing it a lot. If it's going to be something that like this, Oh, something like this, where I'll just sit down and eat it's the whole thing of chocolate chips. It's just going to be gone. <laughs> then I really don't need it open and closed, right? I don't need to, to do that as much. There's a difference between using a glass jar and using a Mylar bag. 
And these are flexible, so as you're filling these, you can often squeeze out a lot of the air and then seal it. Of course, you can't do that very well with a glass jar. Uh -oh. Last time I tried it, I just crushed the jar and made a mess. So <laughs> anyway, but a lot of times these will be, it may say a quart size, but it's actually a little bit larger than that. So if you're oversizing, again, it really doesn't make any difference. It's not gonna be a problem. And these zip seal uh, bags, you're often opening and closing. And so there's just that little bit of extra capacity that's just gonna absorb more oxygen once it's in Introduced. But there is a problem with undersizing it. So you do want to be careful about that. Right. Now, one of the other things that we do a lot with our freeze dried food is to vacuum seal it in addition to using an oxygen absorber. When you vacuum seal, you're sucking all of the air, including the oxygen out. Right. But with the freeze dried, it's very sensitive to the moisture in the air. And the oxygen absorber won't always suck this down. The oxygen might be removed, but there wasn't enough force or whatever to suck it down. And so I feel better in my storage if I'm looking at this and this is popped down and I know that it's secured. So a lot of times what John will do is he'll vacuum seal it for me. So then we're, we've got double duty. We've got the oxygen absorber, but we're also pulling most of that oxygen out, which again is going to make it so that when we open this, it will have even more capacity. The really nice thing that I like is like you said, having that lid pop down, you have that little feeling of security. Okay, I know this has not been compromised, that the lid is not leaking because that's still sucked down, so. My favorite thing to use is actually the freeze dryer to vacuum seal it, but sometimes you can't do that because I've just taken something out of the freeze dryer and there's still the ice on the side and you can't vacuum seal. And so if the freeze dryer is not available to vacuum seal it, then we use our little- Food saver, it does an awesome job. So this is our food saver. There's other products out on the market. We really like this one and it didn't come with these jar sealers, but we got, we ordered the wide mouth and the regular mouth. And these just, you take the ring off, you put that over with the lid in there, you poke that on there and start it. And then when that stops, you just pull this off, that lid seals down tight and you take this off and go on to the next one. You don't have to do that. That's totally overkill, right? Because if you have just used the oxygen absorber, you've and your oxygen absorber was good you have created a, an environment that doesn't have oxygen in it and the other things in the air like the nitrogen won't degrade your food now let's talk just a little bit about how to take care of your oxygen absorbers you can purchase oxygen absorbers in all kinds of different packages these are from harvest right and they've actually started doing the 700 cc oxygen absorbers for theirs. Talk to us about that, John. Well, the only downside is they are fairly large, which might make it a little harder to get it in some containers, and it takes up maybe a little bit more room. But again, um, when we talked to them about this, they said oversizing is a good thing. They get them for the same price, apparently, whether it's a 700 or a 200 or a 400 or a 500. So. They just said they, they've gone to 700 because they'd rather have that little bit of overkill. And I, I totally agree with that. I think, that's, I think that's a great way to go. Especially with the freeze dried foods. That's different than the regular um, grains and things like that. The freeze dried food is very susceptible to moisture. Now these oxygen absorbers are from Pack Fresh USA and they come in all kinds of different sizes. You can buy them like this, this is one that I already opened. This was only the little tiny 100 cc's. Now with the oxygen absorbers, it's tiny. When it's soft like this, you know that it's fresh. Well, pretty close you know that it's fresh. As, it, as it's exhausted, it will get hard and crunchy. But if you, once you open it, whatever you don't use, you want to immediately put into like a little mason jar. Jonathan would vacuum seal this right away. Cause I would, because would. I've got the same thing going on, right? If I suck that down and when I come back, it's still sucked down. I know, okay. It's not that I'm pulling out very much oxygen. I mean, there's not a whole lot of oxygen, but it's that knowing that this thing is sucked down. Okay, I know that it isn't leaked because we did have one day where we pulled out oxygen absorbers and the jar the seal had leaked mm -hmm. and we had ruined a whole bunch of oxygen absorbers. So I'm just a little sensitive to that now that, uh, you know, I'd rather suck that down and know that when I open it, that I know things have been tight. The other thing that you can do is you can reseal these like in a Mylar bag, just a flat one and, yeah. and just seal it up. 
but the smaller the jar, the, the less amount of oxygen is in here and the sooner that chemical reaction will stop. So I really like to use these and even the ones from Harvest Right that are bigger, I can fit them in one of these while I'm waiting. So there's a little indicator in here. This bag has been vacuum sealed when it gets, comes to you and this indicator should be pink or a really light color. Once this is exposed to air, it turns dark. You want to make sure that you work as quickly as possible with the oxygen absorbers because you don't want them to be exposed to air. So we get everything all set up. I'll put the oxygen absorber in the bottom. I know a lot of manufacturers recommend you put it in the top, but for me, I prefer to do it in the bottom. So I'll put it in the bottom of, you know, four or five jars, seal this back up, and then I'll quickly fill up these jars. I tap them down. I always tap them down really good to get as much in that jar as I can. And that's one reason I don't like putting it in the top is because sometimes when you put the oxygen absorber in the top, it's a little bit harder and I lose some of that headspace. That matters a lot when you're wet packing, but when you're dry packing, you don't need that headspace. So that's why I always stick it in the bottom. And then I seal this up right away. Jonathan's usually working right here on the back counter and he'll, he'll do the vacuum sealing yeah. for me. But try not to expose these to the room air longer than 20 minutes. 30 if you really have to, but especially these tiny ones, it's not gonna take long for them to be used up. Um, the larger ones, they've got you know more capacity. I prefer to buy them in packages of 10. That's what we usually buy them in. You can buy them in bigger packages, but then you just have that issue of, are they gonna go bad in a, in a bigger package? If you're opening 50 at a time, uh, you're not probably gonna use 50 and they're either sitting getting exposed or you try and seal it and it doesn't seal completely tight. So buying but in little packages I think is a much better. I think it's much more convenient, but if that's what you have, like this pack, this is an awesome pack. There's no way I'm gonna use them all at once. So when I open this, immediately I'm gonna take out what it is I'm gonna use and I'm gonna put the rest in a jar and I'm gonna tighten it up and that way I know that they're gonna be soft and ready to go. That was a lot for oxygen absorbers, but what we really wanted to show you is the size that you need. For a gallon, you need an 800 cc oxygen absorber. If you put a larger one in there, no problem at all. You can do that with one 800 cc oxygen absorber or four 200s or eight 100 cc. For the quart, which is usually my favorite size, is a 200 cc. And a lot of times, like I said before, I'm using four or 500 cc, and that seems to be plenty of capacity for that. The pint is 100, and this little guy's it only needed a 50 cc. If you have any questions about whether or not the moisture content of what you're wanting to um, dry package like this is acceptable, um, there's a website, I will leave a link, but there's also a great video that food scientist Joseph Bell did for us where he talks about being able to safely store popcorn, which the recommendation is 10% moisture or less in order to, to um, use an oxygen absorber in a low oxygen environment and safely store it. However, popcorn is like around 13. And in that video, he talks about why it's safe and we don't have to worry about botulism in that circumstance. So you always, always want to err on the side of caution, but this is a great way to make sure like that these eggs that I have freeze dried they're going to be good for many, many years on my shelf. And now for the question of the day. What questions do you have about oxygen absorbers? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.